Welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going to be taking a look at the puzzle on screen, which is called Knight's Whirlpool. And this is a collaboration uh, between two very, very good setters. Uh, Potato Head 21, who I think goes by the name of something like Sonic the Hedgehog over on Discord. I might be wrong. It might be the Sonic person. Um, and Sudoku Explorer, uh, another incredible constructor, um, very well known on Logic Masters Germany for publishing a whole series of, of astonishing Sudoku puzzles. Normally very difficult. I don't know how difficult this one is. Um, probably hard, I would guess. Um, but yeah, this is this is a Knight's Move puzzle as well today, which is going to be fascinating. And I say that because I remember, I think the last Potato Head 21 Knight's Move puzzle I did contained some a piece of brand new logic. Uh, and I, I remember that logic still. I mean, it was a few months since I've done that puzzle, but the logic that Potato Head 21 had discovered, I think, was that if you're aware of the Fistmafell ring, and I'm not going to prove it, but the, the, the Fistmafell ring is a theorem in Sudoku that tells you that these 16 digits in the purple ring there are the identical digits to those 16 cells in those two by twos in the corners. And that in and of itself is a wonderful thing to know about, uh, named after the, 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 the constructor Fistemafel. But Potato, Potato Head 21 extended this in the case of a Knight's Move puzzle. He noted that whenever a digit does not appear in the Fistemafel ring, in a Knight's Move puzzle, that digit, and there can only be one such digit, must go in the central cell, which is an amazing thing to know. Uh, and you can actually prove that fairly quickly, and I will do. Um, the proof of that is to say, if I highlight the positions now in the grid where this supposed digit that's not in the purple cells can go, you can see that in boxes one, three, seven, and nine, it would have to go in a yellow square. Now, because of the knight's move constraint now, if we think about where that digit can go in box four, it couldn't go in these two squares anymore. Because the effect of a digit being in one of these two squares would be to lock it out of these yellow squares and force it to be in the same column in boxes one and seven. So we can remove these squares from being possibly yellow, and that logic is symmetrical. So none of those squares can be yellow in boxes two, four, six, and eight. So the only places for yellows in boxes two, four, six, and eight are those cells. And now look, where do you put this digit that's not in purple and can only be in yellow? So we can we could effectively make these purple as well now. Where do you put this digit in the central box? Well, from row five's perspective, it's got to go in one of those three squares. And from column five's perspective, it's got to go in one of these three squares. And the only square that meets both of those criteria is there. So you get this rather astonishing thing, which tells you that, yeah, that there can only be one, one digit in a Knight's Move puzzle that is not in these, um, that is not in the Fistenfell ring. Isn't that incredible? Anyway, that, that, this, is, this is the sort of brain that we're dealing with today. Somebody who has the insight to work out things like that. So I'm looking forward to trying this. Do I have anything to tell you about before we start? Not really, just an appeal as always. Please do subscribe if you enjoy the channel. This is a corner of the internet where we, we get to tackle these astonishing puzzles and discover beautiful logic every day. Um, so if that sounds like it might be up your street, then please hit the like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon too. And that will make the world a happier place, especially in my house. Anyway, let's get on with the rules of this one. What are they? They are normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So let's just deal with that for a moment. Um, if, if you have a cell, I sort of did it in the, in, in the introduction, but let's imagine we're thinking about the digit that goes in the central cell of the grid. Now, whatever this digit is, um, these these cells here are a knight's move away from this cell. Therefore, none of these cells that I've highlighted could contain the digit that's in the central cell because that would make the two digits a knight's move apart and that would break the rules of the puzzle. So don't do that. Um, digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So what does that mean? That means to get the value of this circle, you sum the total of those two cells. So if this was a three and that was a six, three plus six equals nine, and that would be a legitimate way of filling this arrow. And then of course, you'd have to make sure those two cells also summed up to nine. Um, that's it, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. 
let's get cracking. Right, so I can see this is the longest arrow, I think, in the puzzle. Um, and if we think about the minimum we could put onto these three squares, it would be a 1, 2 and a 3, because each of these cells obviously has to contain a different digit. 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6. So this digit here in the circle has to be at least equal to 6. Hmm, okay, so... Well, my eyes are drawn to these this sort of pattern in the top left. None of those arrows is very long, but there seems to be a lot of a lot of potential interaction between these arrows. Um, <laughs> I can't see immediately what this means. Uh, I mean, there there is something there, isn't there? That arrow tip. Whatever's on that arrow tip, I can see that can't go on an arrow in box five. And is that, sim yeah, that's symmetrical. So the arrow tips, oh no, the arrows aren't all the same though, hang on. No, they aren't all the same. This arrow doesn't have a kink in it. So although that one is ruled out of the arrows in box five, this arrow tip, doesn't rule itself out of all the arrow cells in box four because this arrow doesn't kink itself. Um, so we have a some sort of asymmetry around kinky arrows here. Ah, right. But look at this cell. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's look at this cell and let's just ask where that goes in box number two. Because whatever digit this is, let's make it 5, for example. Oops. If that's a 5, it can't go on its own arrow because you can't put 5 plus 0 on an arrow. So these two squares can't be 5. Those three squares can't be 5. And because of the knight's move, those can't be 5. So 5 must go, well, whatever this digit is here. Let's give it a colour, probably. We'll make this purple. So purple has to go in one of those two cells in box two, but we don't know which one. Um, oh, yeah, okay, but that's, I see, that goes round. Oh, ah, right, well, this is why it's called Knight's Whirlpool, presumably, because that, I think that logic goes round in a circle. So this square here, where does that go in box number one now? It's not though there, it's not on its own arrow. It's not in those two squares, so it's in one of these two squares. Now the problem is we don't know what this digit is. It could be purple, but if it's not purple, hang on, let's make it green just for a second. No, oh, acknowledging that purple could be green. So those squares would have to be green. Um, and then does that continue then? can't put it on its own arrow so whatever's in this square which could be green and could be purple let's make it orange can't go on its own yeah it's the same so it's going to go round in a circle this now that digit which we don't know could be blue can't go on its own arrow can't go by night smooth so it's in one of those two cells so so there is some sort of connectivity between between these digits. Something bugging me about this. Um, if that's a five and the five goes here, that would have to be bigger than five. Oh, good grief, right. Is that right? Hang on a minute. That's astonishing. That is astonishing. I have never, ever seen anything like that in a Sudoku. Uh, I'm not sure I've got this right, but it does seem... How could... How could this digit ever not go in the circle, is my question. Let's just make this a five. If this is a five and I try and not put it in this circle, then I put it here. 
Well, the problem with that is that this is therefore bigger than 5. That, that has the effect that this circle is bigger than 5. Even if, even if I put this digit in that circle, this one of these digits is bigger than 5. That means one of these digits is bigger than 5. And that means this can no longer have been a 5 anymore. Because, because one of those digits... Is that, no, hang on, is that right? Yeah, it is right, because that must be forced above 5. And therefore, one of those must be above 5. And because one of them must be above 5, they must both be above 5. And therefore, this could never have been a 5 in the first place. That is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. That is wondrous. Good grief. So actually, this digit, I think, has to... I think these circles have to be the same because the moment one of them is not the same it it goes round the whirlpool and forces your first assumption to be wrong so the moment you try and make one of these different you, you go around the circle and you'll force the, the smaller of the two to be wrong so that well that's abs that's absolutely amazing frankly that is absolutely amazing and I already can tell you that I love this puzzle. And that's a piece of logic I don't think I'll ever forget. It's ridiculous. Um, so now, yeah, now I can just colour all these. These are all the same. I'm going to make them purple. So these are all purple. Now that means purple is in one of those two cells in box number eight. One of these two cells in box number six. One of those two cells in box number seven. And one of, ah, on the arrow in box number, um, box number three. So this digit is bigger than purple. Um, okay. <laughs> um, right. So what can we rule? We can rule the we can rule three and four out of being purple now, because three and four only have one way to make their total. So if this is three, we'd have to make that a one-two pair. But because this is three, that would also be a one-two pair. So we need to have at least Ah, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. There was that arrow tip. Yes, this arrow tip's interesting now because that arrow tip saw four digits in box five. Okay, so this is huge. This is hugely powerful because that means whatever's on these arrows here, we can well we can rule out five and six is what it means let me show you why if um if we put six in a in a in a purple these squares now there's only two ways of making six whoopsie and they are one five and two four so these would be one two four five but this arrow which itself needs to be a one two four or five can't go in any of those four cells because of the knight's move constraint in box five. So we'd have to put this digit in one of these three cells and that's going to mean we've repeated a digit in box five. So there must not be only two ways of making whatever number it is we put into purple. So we're at least up, to, oh, hang on, this is interesting because of this, right? This is, this is absolutely brilliant. So now, we know this is seven, eight, or nine, but it's not nine. Because if, if purple is nine, purple's on the arrow here, and that circle would be a 10, at least. So, so purple is now seven, is seven or eight, purple is. And, okay, which means that we are we're only dealing with three ways of making the total. We're not dealing with four. If this had been a nine, there would have been four ways of making nine in a in in two cells because you could have gone four, five, three, six, two, seven, or one plus eight. 
here, if this is 7, we've got to go 3 plus 4, 2 plus 5, 1 plus 6. If it's 8, we've got to go 1 plus 7, 2 plus 6, 3 plus 5. Now, what does this mean? So I know that cell is an 8 or a 9 now. And I know that cell can't go on an arrow that adds up to only 7 or 8. So that cell can only go in one of two places in box 2. Ooh. Ah, yes. Okay. Right, I'm going to award this one the colour of blueness now. Because um, I almost thought this was going to be broken the other way round. But if this is blue, where does blue go in this box now? It can't go on an arrow that only adds up to purple. Because purple is less than blue by definition of this arrow. So blue, blue's options, avoid night smooth cells, are one of two cells. Now I thought this one might be a problem. Because... It looks like it's going to get very close to putting blue in an impossible place. But in fact, this is necessarily blue for this reason. If this was not blue and this was blue, where are we putting blue in box one? Well, it can't go on an arrow that adds up to purple. It would have to go here, but would be a knight's move away from itself. So blue, I think, goes there, which is therefore an eight or a nine, uh, which means blue is there by the logic we've just talked about. So blue in this box can't ever go on that. Oh, this is beautiful. So blue goes here. Um, so where do we put... Blue can't go on an arrow. Blue is in... Mm, may, um, yeah. Well, blue's in one of those two places. We might be able to do better than that. I thought... For some reason I thought this one was going to be a knight's move away from this. But it's clearly not. It's a king's move away. So, oh, so blue is down here where it joins its friend purple this is going to be horrifically complicated if we have to do a lot of coloring to keep track of isn't it because i've i've introduced the gray flash which is my my new method of sort of corner pencil marking colors so what i'm saying here by putting the, the gray flash in one of those two cells is that this digit is fixed into one of those two cells um, oh, hang on. No, okay. I'm not sure I can go. Oh, I can do the same thing down here. Ah, yeah, this is a little better. Where does blue go in box seven? One of two positions. Okay. Um, so what do we have to do now? Do we have to try and do this... We probably have to do this same exercise with the arrows. I wonder if we, uh, if we, because there's got to be three different ways of making each arrow total. So if I label those both green, that's going to be one way of getting to this total. Now, we know in this box, this way is different from green because green sees both of those digits so that should be a different way we know that this one it also sees both green or it's this green sees both of those this one can't be orange it's in the same box so this needs to be a different color again um now what should we do there i'm going to i'm running out of colors a bit should i go red or yellow no yellow is quite pretty isn't it we'll go yellow um, now, what does that mean? Right, one thing it means is in this box, because this green sees all four of those squares. So this box is filled with oranges and yellows, <laughs> oranges and lemons, said so the bells of St. Clemens. So this is an oranges and lemons box. Um, now, it would be very helpful if I could figure out which, uh, you know, whether this was orange or this was yellow. I don't think a knight's move gets me far enough to do that, though. 
bother. Um, so I think we're going to have to label those up like this. And that means... So that means this digit is green, doesn't it? Because this digit sees all four of those digits. So that's a double green arrow. And that being a double green arrow, still these greens don't see each other, so I can't... Like, if this green was different from this green... Oh no, that wouldn't actually rule out any more cells from the central box, so ignore me. Um, hmm. Okay. Or this one. What's this one? So, oh, this, oh, right. This one's orange, isn't it? Because it's not yellow. It sees it sees a yellow and it sees green. So that's orange. Which might be important somehow, but I don't know how. Um, or this one. What's that one? It's not the same as that one. And it sees one of each of these two. Oh, ah, this being orange. Oh no, that doesn't work. <laughs> this being orange means that this digit goes in one of those two cells. Which means this digit goes in one of those two cells. So this digit has to be in one of those two cells, I think. But seeing as I don't know... Oh, this is going to get horribly difficult. This is really going to get horribly difficult. I'm not even sure this is the right way to do this. I'm almost wondering whether I'd be better off abandoning this tactic of trying to do this in doubles and do it in, you know, yeah, because for example, in this, in terms of these oranges, I know that this digit is actually the same as that digit and that digit must be the same as that digit. So I think we're on the wrong track here. I think we might be better off doing this, doing this differently. So what are we going to do? We're going to say that. <laughs> Right, we're going to give the, we're going to go back to basics. So this digit, we're going to award the mantle of yellowness. This digit, we're going to award the mantle of greenness. Now, the yellowness of this one means it's not in those four cells. So these four cells need to be different digits. Right, so we'll make this one orange and red, because orange and red are sort of near each other. So that's indicating in my brain, at least, that these two are on the same version of the purple arrow. Now these two are, what I'll do is I'll make these two black and gray. And I know people don't like me using black uh, with, with when I put numbers in cells, but let's be honest, I don't seem to have very numbers, many numbers in cells at the moment. So, so we'll do this. We'll have like light, light colours here. So we've got lemons and limes, oranges and strawberries, and some very unpleasant looking fruit here, black and grey. Um, now this digit has to be a lemon or an orange. Uh, no, a lemon or a lime, because it sees all of those. So I don't know the order of those but I know that they're a lemon and lime in some order. The, oh, oh no this is going to get difficult already. I'm, now I'm not sure this was the right thing to do. So these four digits, I now know the colours of them because they can't be the lemon and lime colour but Yes, 
Yeah, okay. Oh, no, this isn't too bad, actually. This arrow can't be red. And therefore, we know it's from the black-gray pair. So that's a black-gray pair. Oh, I think I did that wrong. That's the black-gray pair. This digit, we know these four digits, therefore, are red, orange, black, grey in some order. And, wow. <laughs> okay, and I know that black sees that square, so that square is not black, so that square is black. Ah, yeah, okay, so I'm still, believe I'm still a believer in this method. Um... Ah, yes, 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 yes. Grey. Where does grey go in this box? It can't go here by knight's move. So it goes on the arrow with the purple. So that is a purple-grey arrow. Ah, okay. Well, purple, purple is quite a high number. It's seven or eight. So grey is a low number. So this arrow must be a one, two, seven, eight arrow. Um, because if this is eight, then this would have to be seven plus one. If this is nine, this could be seven plus two or eight plus one, but one of those things must be true. So the low digit, which is this one, is always one or two. And having said that, I wasn't gonna put any digits into these into these black cells and grey cells. It now looks like I might have to. So this digit is now, it could be 6 if this is 1 plus 6 equals 7. It could be 7 if this is 1 plus 7 equals 8. Um, oh, I suppose it could be 2 plus 5 equals 7. I'll bother. Okay, 5, 6 or 7 I think. Okay, um, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know is the correct description of my knowledge about these things. Um, so, where do we look now? I would really love to colour in more of these, di well, at least disambiguate like the orders here. So I've got, so this one can't be black now. These two can't be grey now. So it's difficult to see that. I, I really, I think we are going to have to work on our palette uh, for the software because I find this grey and this grey too close to be, you know, as I'm scanning it, I'm sort of wondering about it. Um, okay. Now, now what? So black can't be there. So one of those two squares is black. How do I get this one? This one is not oranges, it's not lemons and limes. I don't actually see how to... If, if, if this was red-orange, red and orange would go down there. If this was black-grey, that would be grey, this would be black. I don't see what's wrong with that. If, the, if, this, if this was red-orange, that would become black, which would make this grey which will make this red-orange, which might be okay. Maybe I've got to do something different. Um, can't do anything with this, can I? I know this is not purple now. So this one, this one could be blue. Hmm, it could be blue. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> this is very hard. Um, hmm. 
Hmm. Where does purple go in this column? That might not be a bad question. Purple can't go in those three squares because we seem to have locked purple into this domino. Can't go here by Sudoku. Can't go here by Knight's move. Can't go on an arrow that only adds up to... Because if we put seven or eight on an arrow, that's going to be nonsense. You're going to, this is going to have to be a double digit number. And it can't... Oh, actually, purple can't go here. Ah, okay. Purple can't go here because purple's in one of those two squares. And if you put purple there, the Knight's move would rule it out of both. So purple in this column is either here or here. I don't have a good way of pencil marking that. Ah, no, no, no. Right, this is lovely. Right, that's not purple. This isn't purple because of this. If that's purple, that's a knight's move away. And that means that's purple. And now you can't put purple in either of those two squares. That's ridiculous. So if this is purple... Yeah, you don't get to place purple in box 7, so it's not purple, which means this is purple, which means that's not purple. Here we go. Right. So now we've got we've got purplage done. And purple can't go on the arrow, can't go here. So purple is in one of three cells in box number 9. Aha. Yeah, that's great. So purple in one of these three, purple in one of those two. Where does purple go in row seven? Well, now it can't go in any of these cells. It can't go here, it can't go here, so it must go there. So that's purple. We get to remove purple from here. Blue is forced downwards. Oh, no, blue is always downwards, but that's purple. So that's that definitely feels like progress. Um... Right. Right. Here is a good question that we can ask now. Because of this, we know black is in one of those two squares. So black can't be in those two squares in row five. So where does black go in row five? Yeah. Where does black go in row five? It goes there. It doesn't go here. Because grey in this box is in one of those two cells. And that means because grey is on a line with black, black is in one of those two squares. That cannot be black. So so grey, sorry, no, so black in this line has to, it can't be there, can't be in those two, can't be here because black's in one of those because it's got to be on an arrow with grey. That is black. So this is a 5, 6 or a 7. Black has to be in one of those two cells in the bottom of the grid. Ah, yeah, yes, beautiful. Right, this is this is progress. So now we've got a black in box four. That can't be a black grey arrow. So this must be a red orange arrow. So oh, so oh, I think that was somebody posting something. Um, so we've now got red can't go here so red is in one of those two and orange can't go here so orange is one of one of these two so ooh. oh if that was orange we could rule orange out of here ah hang on now right let's come back to the middle box now we've got red and orange looking at that square which is now only the option of being black so that means that this square must be gray on that arrow that's not gray anymore Oh, this is so ridiculous. Now, orange looks at this square by knight's move, so that's become red, and that must be, you've guessed it, orange. So now we have got somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but we have got somewhere. Ooh, that's almost interesting. I was looking at where grey went. Grey is in one of those two cells. And grey is here. So grey is in one of those two cells in in box number six. Now, I was wondering whether grey could be on the arrow or in the circle, but I think it can. If grey is on the circle, it would have to be, because 
it's a high digit then, but it could be a 6 or a 7 and add up to a 7 or an 8. Oh no, hang on, grey's alone. Hang on a minute, no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Because grey is the low number, isn't it? So grey is this digit. Yeah, okay, we're going to have to make sure we stay on top of our pencil marks. This is important. Grey can't, grey cannot be that digit. So, so grey is here. I think in box number six. Ah, ah, well, that digit's very interesting as far as this arrow is concerned because that digit cannot go on that arrow because of the knight's move. So, that so if that digit is a one, you can't put one on the arrow, that would be a two, three, four arrow adding up to nine. And if that digit's a 2, you can't put 2 on the arrow, so the minimum you could put on it would be 1, 3, 4, adding up to 8. So this square is only 8 or 9 now. So does that mean it's the same as this digit? That seems to be what we're heading towards, doesn't it? Um... How do we do that then? If that's blue, if that's blue, blue would go here. If it's not blue, it's the sort of counterpart 8, 9 to blue. And oh, actually, that's interesting. If this is not blue, then purple would have to be 7. Uh, what does that do? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so what should we do now? Let us... Golly. I would like to be able to disambiguate those two digits. Uh, can I do that somehow? That's a question, isn't it? This digit must be in one of those two cells. But I don't know what this digit's colour is yet. I mean, I know it's lemon or lime. So if it was, if it was green, green would go here. Green would go in one of those two. I don't know. I think this is bit bifurcated is now I don't want to do that um, let's try and think harder where is the right place to look in this puzzle for some sort of deduction orange I suppose must be in one of those two cells let's put that in that means orange is in one of these two cells red can't go here so red might be able to be in both of those cells. Now, no, okay. I was hoping that might be, allow me to, if, if that had pushed red in there, we'd have known that was impossible. But if that's red, you get a red-black combination. This digit. I really do want to disambiguate those two. What's the way of doing that? That's my question. Unfortunately, I very much do not know the answer to that question. The answer is blowing in the wind. That's what it is. So... This box, I've actually got an awful lot done in this box. Grey is in one of those two, I've just noticed. Now, oh, I see, I've run out of colours, haven't I? Ah, so this box is very highly specified from a chromatic perspective. It really is beautifully colourful. But I've run out of colours because One of these is a digit that I've not coloured in. What's going on with that then? I thought... 
Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Now I see. Yeah, there is there is an uncolored digit, isn't there? And we can see that by thinking about. I can see it clearly if there's an eight in a in a. If there's an eight in a purple square, then I can't put four on an arrow cell. And this would be a nine. I'd have to put seven on a. So in turn, let's just think about the digits one to nine. If we put eight in a purple square, that would become nine. So eight and nine have gone away. Seven and one have gone away because they're on arrows. Two and six have gone away and three and five have gone away. So there's only four that is we've not thought about and four in this box because we've colored everything else would have to go in one of those two cells. But what happens if this is seven instead? If this is seven, one, six, two, five, and three, four are all used. So the digits one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven are all used. And then depending on what this is, which could be eight or nine, I think, this digit, the, the sort of mystery digit that goes into one of those squares in box four would have to be eight or nine and not obviously the same as this one. But I don't have a good way of, I've run out of colors. I, I want to keep my gray flashes because I think the gray flashes are important to tell me about cells that can only be, or that, that aren't necessary. You know, if I remove the gray flash from here I just think that would be really difficult to follow. Maybe oh, I might be able to use zero. Hang on, that's not a bad idea. Right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put zero. Zero is going to be the digit that has the, 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 the digit with no color. <laughs> the colorless digit is zero in this puzzle. So I know zero is in one of those two cells. I know zero is in one of those three cells as a result, presumably. These are all coloured. Zero can't go here. Yeah. Okay. So zero is in one of those. What about zero in this box? Ooh. Um, don't know. Do I? What about zero? Oh, zero must be in one of. Ah, that can't be zero anymore. So zero in the top box is in one of those two cells. Ah, so zero. So zero is down here. So zero overlaps with where blue goes. This was profitable. So this is a blue zero combination now. Blue is a high digit. OK, that's interesting. So can I keep going with this? So I've now got zeros up here. What do I know about zero in this box? Um, zero can't go on a colored cell. It can't go in a lemon and lime cell. So I think zero has three options. I might be wrong about that. I think I might have missed this. Uh, if that's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, actually, no, not this box is not, is not is not interesting. But this cell's interesting. That can't be zero anymore because it would rule zero out of the three zero cells. So that's not zero. So now, oh, so now zero. Zero is not purple. So zero is in one of those two cells in box number six. So, ooh, yeah, this is this is really amazing, actually. The work that the zero is doing is completely beautiful because zero can't go here by night's move. It can't go there. It doesn't overlap with purple or gray, which means zero is in one of those two squares in box three, which means zero can't be here anymore. That would rule both possibilities for zero out. Now, zero is in those four squares in boxes two and five, which means we have to put zero in column five. It must be in one of these two. It can't be in that one. That would rule both zeros out there. So there's a zero in one of these two. So zero in this box now. Um, oh, right, this is interesting. 
I don't think we know whether Zero can go on the arrow, but I don't think we have to know. Just doing Sudoku on where Zero can go in box number nine. It can't go here because of these zeros. It can't go here because of these zeros. So Zero is in one of four places. Now, that means that where's the Zero going in row seven of the grid? Well, it's not there, it's not there. So it must be here, so that's not Zero. Therefore, this loses its ability to be blue which means that this has become a purple-blue domino. Oh, right, this is, this is important, I think, because now blue... No, well, now it looks to me like blue has to be in one of those cells, and blue is massive, so blue can't be on the arrow here. So I think that cell has just become blue out of nowhere in box number... Uh, box number nine. So now blue is not here. So blue is in one of those two cells. Let's put that in. So that, oh right, so this is, it's still very much looking like blue could be the circle digit here. Wow, okay, well that definitely felt like progress. So, What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, I don't know is the short answer. I wish I did. Ah, yellow in this box now. Can't go there. So does that mean that's a yellow? I think this is a yellow zero combination. So this digit must be the, uh, that, ah, yeah, this is great. Yeah, this is great. It's magical almost, to be honest. It's magical because now this digit, not being able to be yellow, I think has to be green. It's like a naked single because every other cell in this box is colored without a gray stripe. So that's, gray, that's green. Therefore, this square is yellow. Therefore, this square is green. Now yellow is in one of those three cells, and green, ah, ah, so green is up here overlapping with orange, so these, that is now a green-orange pair, and row one is done. I mean, it doesn't look done. I will accept, I will accept to those of you who are looking at row one saying, how can he ever claim this is done? You're right, it doesn't look very done, but it is done. It is fully specified. Well, sort of. Um, okay. Oh, hang on. Well, I'm now... Because, oh, I see, yeah. Because I locked zero out of here, zero gets pushed down, so that's not zero anymore. Uh, let's get rid of that. So zero is here in box number three. Doesn't resolve, doesn't back into box two and tell me which of those is zero. Um, hmm. So probably I need to note that one of those is yellow, don't I? But I definitely don't know which of them is yellow. And what's the other digit then I've got to put down here? I oh, see, it could be red. If that's red, I've got to put a red down here. I'm not getting this. There's, there must be a colour I've not put in this box, I think. I've got yellow, black. What's the colour that's missing from this box? It's... Oh, no, I know. I know what it is. This can't be red. Because if that's red, this triple is disturbed by a red. And, but this is actually a triple. It's a triple on zero, purple and grey. So that's not red. Wow. So that means that this is red. This is an orange, orange zero combination. And red, oh look, yeah, this is good. Now red can't go here. So red goes in one of those overlapping with black. So that is no longer able to be yellow. This becomes yellow. Yellow is, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, so this is black. This is 
black and red. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is mad. Absolutely crazy. Yellow is in one of those two cells in box number five. Um, can we do better than that? Probably in some way. I can't for can't visualize. Oh, red. Red's in one of those three cells, I've just noticed. So red is in one of those three. Um, hmm. Okay, this is good, but it's still not good enough, is it? How can we do better? I've not I've not even pencil marked green into this box. Green, I see green can go in three places perhaps. That might be why. So, is that really true? Might be, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, how do we make more progress here? How do we make more progress here? That's the question that we're now grappling with. Um, I must be able to... What have I not uh, coloured in in this box? Because there's a possibility this is a naked single on yellow. Because it's the only colour I've put in here. So let's just, I could have to go, literally, I'm so, uh, it's, well, I'm, I was about to say I'm so bad, but, but this is hard to scan. I, I do think this is hard to scan. What could this digit be? Can it be red? No, it can't be red. Red seems to be here unambiguously. Can it be yellow? Yes. Can it be blue? No, no, it can't be blue. Can it be orange? No. Can it be purple? No. Can it be green? No. Can it be black? No. Can it be grey? No. Can it be zero? No. That's, this is a naked single. That is a naked single on yellow, I think. That is quite, uh, it's quite extraordinary. I mean, to me anyway. I think that can only be yellow. I mean, I've just elim eliminated every other option. All eight, all seven other colours, it cannot be. I'm going to do it again because I don't believe myself. Um, so, seven other colours are red. It definitely isn't red. Uh, blue. Is, is it definitely? No, it's definitely not blue. Orange. It's not orange. Purple. It's not purple. Green. It's not green. Black. No. Grey. No. It can be yellow and the only other digit is zero which it can't be so that is yellow which means that's not yellow which means these two square oh no it doesn't no green still got three positions blue so this is now a triple on blue green and zero yellow oh can yellow what ah yeah this is a little bit interesting Yellow can't overlap with this digit now. This is an eight or a nine. I can't put eight or nine on an arrow and yellow is an arrow digit, which means even if purple is eight, yellow's maximum value is seven. So yellow is now placed in this box, which means yellow is in one of two places, I think in box number, uh, box number nine. So what's going on in this row now then? We must, I must have almost fully specified row five. I've got almost all the colors in it. What color, what color overlaps with zero over here? It's orange, isn't it? Orange is in one of these two cells. So there's an, so this is orange zero. That, so where does orange go in this column? Orange has got to go in one of those three cells. So 
black in this box has to be up here now. This is some of the maddest colouring I think I've ever done in a puzzle. So So what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. But it's quite exciting to try and find out, isn't it? We've got... Um, <laughs> I have no idea what we do with this. We've got... So column 5 is done, I've just noticed, actually. Column 5 is done. Row five is done. Which is a little bit interesting. Um, hmm. It's a little bit interesting, but it's still, this is still tricky, isn't it? This digit, I keep coming back to this digit, it sort of feels like it must be. Yeah, I see. Right, okay, I think we can now say this is blue. And that's because whatever this digit is, where is it going in box five? So forget the fact this has got a blue flash at the moment. I just want to ask where this digit, which we know is an eight or a nine by quantum, where does the quantum of this digit get to go in box five? Well, it's, it can't be in these cells by Sudoku. That's fine. It can't be an arrow cell because it's an eight or a nine. So it's not those cells. And it's not yellow because we know yellow is an arrow cell, basically. It's on an arrow there. And actually, this digit is not the same as purple, so it's not there. So that digit is the same as this digit. So this digit is an eight or a nine now. Now, where does that digit, where does these two digits are the same, therefore, where do they go in this box? Well, again, they can't go on any color that is along an arrow. These two are both along an arrow, so it must be there. So this digit is proved now to be blue, um, which means that we can get rid of a bit of highlighting, look. That's not really, well, that get rid of that highlighting. So. Yes, yeah, so box five gets fully specified now. We've got a, a green, a green zero combination. So green has to go up here. Well, <laughs> so this has become a green, red, black combination. Um, that's grand, isn't it? So, what does that mean? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it means something. Um, zero. You see, if this was zero, that would be zero. That would be orange. That would be orange. Um, we've not really done very much at all in box eight. Oh, look, we can do something. Oh, no, we can't. I don't know which of these is, is correct. One of these is obviously orange. One of these is green. Red and yellow have to be down there somewhere. So that tells me things like this digit is now not red or yellow. Um, okay. So. <laughs> no, I'm really stuck. Oh, that square is green. That can't be green. Ah, ah, that's important, isn't it? Yeah, I think that is important. Where does, 
Where does this digit now go in this box? This digit is a red black digit, so it can't go here and it can't go there by Sudoku, so it must go here. So that one, so this one has become green, which means that one is now green, which means that one is now orange, which means this one is not orange, this one is orange, this is a real zero, so that loses its, z oh, hang on, that one loses its zero, these lose their zero, so zero is in one of those two. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so this box is done now. So, so we are. I do feel I'm making a tiny bit of progress. Grey is in one of those. So these don't deserve get, to get striped anymore. That's this box is specified. This box is specified. This, yeah, the whole of the top of the grid is now fully specified, right down to the bottom of row six. But rows seven, eight, and nine are far from specified. Although actually column two is specified and column five is specified. So column eight, we need to specify, is that specified? The answer is no, because I don't know what that digit is. Um, Yeah, I mean, I know some things about this column. I know I've got red and black and green and orange and yellow and blue. Uh, what, what exactly do I not know about this column? I, let me just try and keep track of this using the palette. So I've got red. I've got yellow, I've got blue. So the bottom line of colours is done. I've got green. I don't quite know about purple. I've got orange, I've got black. So it's purple, grey, and the zero. So this digit and this digit have those options as well. So this is a purple, grey, zero, triple. But that can't be grey. And it can't be purple. Oh god, this is doing my head in. Is this zero? Um I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to check this again. I'm so bad at this scanning with colours. But what all I'm doing is going down this column and asking myself what's left to place. And I'm doing that by reference to the colour pad on the right of the grid, because that's the only way I can keep track of it. So the eight colours and the zero are what we're looking for. Now we've definitely got red in this column, definitely, it's in one of those two. I've definitely got yellow, I've definitely got blue, I've got orange. I haven't got purple, but this can't be purple because purple seems to have to be in those three. Now, why is purple in those three and not here? It's because this purple is a high number and can't go on a three sum arrow. So that makes sense. So green, it can't be. Black is in one of those two squares, so it can't be that. And it can't be gray by night's move. So it is zero, this is just zero, um, which means that's not zero. Uh, so we can get rid of zero from here. We can get rid of zero from here. This is now zero. So this, so this is not blue, <laughs> which means this is blue, which means that is purple, which, oh, this is lovely. Okay, so now that's not only a seven or an eight, but the, neither of those is now purple, which seems to mean this is the only place purple can live in box nine, which means, ah, ah, which means that square is not now purple. So that's gray, which is a one or a two. This is a seven or an eight and it's purpled. And all of the purples are now done. Gray, gray can't go here. This is a zero, so gray is there. So grey, oh, this is, this is really clever. This is really clever. Grey is in one of those three, but it can't go in an arrow 
there, because I can't make that double one. So grey is here, I think. Which means grey is not here. So grey is in one of those two. I'm not sure if we can do better than that. Um, that definitely feels like it's useful though, doesn't it? So now... Now what do we do? We must be able to get these two digits because this column is now basically fully specified. I've not put black... Oh yeah, look, I've not put black into this column and it can't go there by night's move. So that's a black digit and it's five, six or seven. So that... Ooh, that's interesting. So that's pushing this up to being at least a six. That's at least a six. But, and what colour is it? It's it's not blue. It's not purple. I'm going mad here. What is what colour is this? It must be it must be a colour that we can. Is it no? We've got grey already. We've got black already. Oh, I see. Is it? It's whichever of. Yeah, it's going to depend on the way the zeros unwind. So if the zeros unwound this way, then this column would have a green and need an orange. So this is an orange. Ah, this is an orange or a green. But that means it can't be. Oh, it can. Well, it can't be eight or nine because that the fact it's an orange or a green is an arrow digit, and the maximum an arrow digit can be is a seven. So that's an eight or a nine, which means. This can't be a 7 anymore, which means this can't be a 7 anymore, which means this can't be a 7 anymore, this can't be a 7 anymore, this can't be a 7 anymore. So we're down... Well, we still don't know what this is, but that square now is a, a 1 or a 2. So we've now got a 1-2 pair in this row. And I'm sure there's some way we can resolve this. It's probably something to do with these arrows, isn't it? Do I? No, because I don't know whether this is orange or green. This is just, it's a fascinating, oh gosh, I've gone, I've tripped over the hour. But I, I mean, that's, it's so, I love puzzles like this. I just totally lose track of time. I'm just absolutely absorbed by trying to work out what's going on and it's not in any way it's so interesting to try and figure this out and I don't think we're miles away from doing this now I want to I want to say I know what zero is zero can't be a big digit ah that's it hang on that is it isn't it when we were looking at what the value of zero was, where? Yeah, this is it. This is it. We can do it. We can do the puzzle. Because zero is the unknown digit. It's the, it's the one that doesn't deserve a colour. Now, where purple is eight, because blue becomes nine, and because we have to use 1, 7, 2, 6 and 3, 5 on arrows, 0 is a 4, which would work very nicely here. A 4 on an arrow would be a perfectly reasonable thing to put on it. Now, but if a 4 on a 3 cell arrow, by the way, if, if purple is 7 instead, then the digits on arrows are 1, 6, 2, 5, 3, 4. So all of the digits from 1 to 7 are used, which means 0 must come from eight or nine and I can't put eight or nine on a three cell arrow so this is telling us that this is a four zero is four and it's not only telling us that it's also telling us that this is eight because we need to make room for that four to appear in the world uh, and we can do that by making this eight and allowing zero to be a low enough digit so if this is 8, that must be 9. So this is 9, this is 1. <laughs> um, that means that's 2, which means that's a 7 and that's a 5, I think. Oh, and I've broken the puzzle. 
Ah, I have broken it. That arrow's not working at all. What have I got wrong there? That arrow works, but this arrow definitely doesn't. That needs to be a seven, which is definitely not. This arrow doesn't work. Oh, so maybe I just made a mistake there when I just did that. Is that what I did? Hang on a minute. Sorry, but I've clearly got something not understood here. I think I've gone back too far as well. Um, what is it that we've done wrong there? The answer is I don't know, but I don't have a good feeling about this. I think I'm going to go back even further and change the direction of thinking here. So where has this gone wrong? It's, it's, I don't like this digit having to be not a set. I need this to be a seven, don't I? But that's going to mean I've got a problem here because I need these. To, this will not have a correct value. So it's gone wrong somehow with the positioning. Maybe it's this digit that's wrong. Mm, something, something feels awry here. I can't work out what it is. This doesn't feel like that's there. This would be zero. This is one or two. And it is one or two, isn't it? I can't put one or two here. That was a deduction I made. I said I can't put a one or a two into this square. That does seem right, right to me. But that gives us the problem that I want. I can't make this black. And that means this has to be black. But I think I'm proving as a result of the zero thinking that black has to be seven, which means I have to put seven here and it's gone wrong. And this, for some reason, I can put black here and I can put one or two on this arrow and then everything would be OK. But this would be in the wrong place. Why have I got two blues in the same row? Uh, why have I got that? That doesn't look right. Hang on. Maybe I've gone wrong a little bit earlier. I'd actually be I'd actually be pleased if I have to be honest. So let me go back. Okay. So I got I got purple here. Why have I got two blues in this row? This is something I don't understand. Oh, it's when I've tidied up this, is it? So what I did was I worked out that this square couldn't be a zero. Now I can't remember how I did that. Yeah, the, oh, I see. Look, I've got this the wrong way around. This is where it's gone wrong. Aha, aha, yes. Well, I'm pleased, actually. I shouldn't be pleased, but I am. But what I can't remember is how I worked out that the zero... Oh, yes, I do remember. This had to be a naked single, didn't it? Right. Okay. I, imagine the last five minutes didn't happen. They didn't happen. But I think I think it's still good. It's still good. This was a naked single zero. So this was not a zero. So I did that correctly. That place is zero here, which means this square is not blue. Therefore, this square, yep, you've guessed it, is blue. Now, what I then seem to conclude is that this was blue, which was complete and utter nonsense. That is purple. This is blue, which means these two squares are eight nines. This square is a seven or an eight. Now, that's a, well, the only bad thing about this, and it's not bad, it's actually a good thing because it means that I can now carry on with solving the puzzle with some sort of hope of getting it correct, um, is that before I had a purple here placing me a purple there. Oh, and that disambiguated the order here, which I can't do. But what I can do is to restore my thinking about the nature of zero. 
the nature of zero must be preserved because the logic around the fact that I need to put a digit lower than six, seven, lower than seven, eight, and nine on this arrow is still correct. So this zero is still a four. And that still means I can place lots of zeros in the grid. And more, much more importantly than that, it means that this purple must still be eight. And that is lovely because that means that blue must be nine. And it also means, what? <laughs> Have I done all the nines? Yes. I haven't done all the eights. Oh, yeah, but this is important. Look, there's an eight. There's an eight on this, on this arrow now. So this is a, this is a one eight pair, which means that grey is one. Aha. Aha. And that means that black is seven, which I think we had last time. And now that means. Well, what does that mean? So that means that seven is down here somewhere in one of those two. Now we know now it can't go on this arrow because this would have to be an eight or a nine, which it can't be. So we get to place the seven in a different place to where it went last time. So that becomes black. Now I need to put gray down here again. It can't go in the arrow. So the gray, yes. So this switches my grays round, my gray and my black around. And now it looks much more reasonable, doesn't it? For these two squares to just be one apart without having to impinge upon the seven, eight, nine-ness of the world. Um, okay, good. Now, <laughs> what does this mean? One, oh, okay, so one of these is a one. This is a zero one combination. Maybe I should change all my zeros now to fours, or maybe not, I'm not sure. Um, this arrow has a nine on it. Uh, sorry, it's a nine arrow with a four on it. So that must be a two, three pair. Which might be important. Oh yeah, well, yes, it is important. Where does one go in this box now? One has to go there. And one we know is a gray digit. So now, oh, this is lovely. So one goes there in box number seven because it can't go here by night's move. So that's gray, that's one, which means that's not gray, which means this is zero, which we know is four. Therefore, that's a four. Therefore, this is a one. This is now not yellow, because we know that yellow is something other than zero. Uh, so we can get rid of the yellow digit. Um, we got the, f how many fours have we got in the grid? Uh, yeah, look, this four sees that one. Ha <laughs> ha, so this square's got to be four. It's not therefore orange. This square's got to be actually orange which means one of these squares is now oranged. So we now know that this combination is red, yellow, and orange, none of which we know yet. And therefore this digit should be green in the box, which means that green is not here. Oh yeah, which we could have told us anyway, once we got the four. So that digit becomes not, this digit becomes green. Four is a digit on a line, so it's got to be, what's the actual options? It can't be two because that's gonna put one here. It could be three and that would put two here. Is there anything wrong with that? Um, no, in fact, that would look rather good because it would disambiguate this as well. This can't be four. And it can't be five because that would put a four here and clash with this four. So it's not four. So it might be able to be six. If it's six, this would be a five. So this digit is two or five. This digit is three or six. So green, if green is three or six, let's just put that in around the grid. 
and see if we can deduce something about that. This is on this line here. So that means that square is a two. So yellow is a two or a five because it might, we must be adding up to eight. So yellow becomes two or five everywhere that it appears. Yeah, that could work with the yellow being there, couldn't it? Um, yeah, and the yellow is in one of these cells as well, I've just noticed. So these squares now seem to have to be a yellow, orange, red combination, which means that yellow, orange, red, I don't see if anything's seeing those. What about that then? So this is black is one of these digits. Green must be the other one. I've not put green in. So we know this is green. So therefore that must be black. This must be green. This is still very intricate. It's not giving up lightly, is it? Now, ah, now that seems to have to be green by Sudoku. So that becomes green. And all our greens are placed. So I think box nine I still have to do some coloring okay okay so what can we say about the world now and why isn't this just resolved that's what I want to know why is it not just done ah I can do a bit more with ones I've just noticed I can put one and an eight here and that's going to give me some more digits that's now this is now the purple digit. So eight goes here. Okay, that's good. So this is no longer purpled. Oh, that's not done very much. I think we've now just done all of the ones and all of the eights. Okay, but we got, I suppose we did get another digit in this box. We've got, oh no, I know what it is. Look, I've got a two, three pair, of course, on the nine arrow. So if I've got a two, three pair on the nine arrow, and this has to be a, a three or a six, Green is now six. Aha! And if green is six, we know that yellow is two. Oh, hang on, I'm not going to be able to do it like that. Yellow is two. So one of these is, yes, and now we can see this is three and that's two. So that must be, of its nature, this has become yellowed. Um, we can probably fill the rest of this box in somehow. I'm not immediately seeing how to. It's fives and sevens I need to place, neither of which I know anything about. Um, okay, but I see that this little arrow here now tells me that square is a five. And five is, is definitely either red or orange. Fit all these in, make ourselves feel at home. Uh, three, five, three, five, three, five here. What's black? Black is seven apparently now. Okay, good. Ah, so black can be placed in this box. It has to go there, which means that square is not black. So the blacks are placed everywhere. So these squares become red, which we know is threes and fives. Um, and this square here is a five and so we know that this is a red um, a red orange pair okay <laughs> I do feel like I'm now doing this in the slowest way possible these two squares, ah, we can place the two and that means we can place the three and we know that two is yellow so that digit becomes yellow. This loses its ability to be yellow. And I see this red sees that square. So this is orange. That of its nature therefore is red, which means that this is orange, this is red. And now we know that red is five. So all of the fives, all of the reds become fives, all of the oranges become threes. Oh, and that is, is the puzzle? Oh no, these aren't done. Okay, I thought it was going a bit too well. Five, three, and two, and we need to color these properly. So that's a red. Two is yellow, isn't it? And therefore that one should be orange. And that might be the correct solution, although that, that's not been colored in. Should only have fours uncolored. 
and I should be able to click yay <laughs> that's fantastic what a fantastic puzzle ridiculously difficult and ridiculously intricate um, but it started with something quite mesmerizing uh, you can't really see it now actually let me just duplicate the tab so that we can oh, you've already solved this puzzle stay paused replay restart okay uh, yeah it started off with these wonderful arrows here and the fact that you had to force all of those circles to be the same number that was so clever that is so clever I cannot tell you and then from there it was really just it was quite a intense coloring exercise I, I can't really remember a puzzle I've done that where it's been that intense I needed more colors in my palette um, but eventually what how did we resolve it you had, yeah we resolved it with a few hor horrific chromatic singles. This square, I think, was a chromatic single. That square was a chromatic single. There was this lovely digit here, which was a one or a two locking itself off that line. That's very clever. Um, so it's really smart setting, very minimalistic, um, but achieved in a way that still leads to an awful lot of fun for the solver. So big thanks, Potato Head 21 and Stoku Explorer. I hope you enjoyed watching me battle through it and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.